Y News. The top stories tonight in Y News. President Rodrigo Duterte tells people who refuse to comply with community quarantine protocols they had better shape up. President Duterte extends the ECQ in Cebu City until July 15 while retaining general community quarantine in Metro Manila. After President Rodrigo Duterte gave his order last night, Transportation Secretary Arthur Tugade immediately complied, while a number of stranded passengers sought help while staying outside Naia Terminal 3. A UNTV exclusive, a police regional director confirms to UNTV that Chief of Holo Municipal Police Station has been relieved from his post. Thailand begins phase five of easing COVID-19 related restrictions today. Tokyo Disneyland reopens to fanfare and social distancing. Good evening, Philippines and the world. Today is Wednesday, July 1, 2020. I am Harleen Delgado. Join us in the next hour as we deliver today's top stories around the globe. I'm Angelo Castro III. We are also seen in 1,935 satellite monitoring centers nationwide and via live streaming worldwide through the UNTV News and Rescue social media accounts and our website, untvweb.com. I am William Theo. First in the news, President Rodrigo Duterte is saddened with the numbers of COVID-19 cases and deaths in the country. In his public address last night, he revealed his sentiments. Mirasola Bogadil tells us why. I am sad. And I am... Para akong... Narawalaan ang hangin dito. We have now uh, a total deaths of 1,266. Cases reported today, 1,008. So that is where the numbers are. During his address to the Filipino people before the announcement of community quarantine levels across the country for the first 15 days of July, President Rodrigo Duterte expressed how he feels about the country's COVID-19 situation. Yesterday, the total confirmed cases of coronavirus infections reported to the country's health department was 37,514. He stressed his observation on Talisay City, which now has 291 confirmed cases as of today, and Cebu City with over 6,000 total positive cases. Talisay was like a marketplace every day. Nagiinoman kay dyan, susugal, almost nonchalant of the, the dangers uh, that were rolling around. Uh, because you did not follow rules. Hindi ganun karami yan. You have the highest. Cebu is now the hotspot for uh, COVID. Bakit? Eh, wala mong sunod eh. You, you better shape up. Meanwhile, the chief executive commended the compliance of the national capital region with community quarantine protocols. There was a substantial compliance. I would not say that there was no violation. There were violations, but uh, not in a scale I saw in other places. The national government retains general community quarantine all over Metro Manila. You know, Manila and the it's environs. Maraming tao. But because sumunod sila with few uh, violations thereabout, uh, they, they had, they, they have, or we here in Manila had a good chance of uh, uh, at least uh, avoiding it. President Duterte also hinted at visiting provinces soon. But the problem is you are going out of the 
to the provinces in the coming days. Kasi hindi ko naman matiis na may mangyayari tapos nandito lang ako sa Pasig. Mirasol Abugadil, UNTV, News and Rescue. We serve the people, we give glory to God. Also, President Rodrigo Duterte extends the enhanced community quarantine over Cebu City and maintains general community quarantine over Metro Manila and several other areas. Also, the President orders probe against a local courier. Our Malacanang correspondent Rosalie Coz will join us tonight to tell us why live. Yes, Rosalie. Harleen, President Rodrigo Duterte is keeping Cebu City under Enhanced Community Quarantine or ECQ from July 1 to 15, 2020 to prevent the spread of COVID-19. According to the Chief Executive, the city becomes the new hotspot for the novel coronavirus. President Duterte still hopes the situation in the city will improve through the help of Environment Secretary Roy Simatu. Metro Manila and nearby provinces Cavite and Rizal, Benguet, Lapu-Lapu City, Mandawe City, Leyte, Ormoc, Southern Leyte, Talisay City, Minglanilla, and Consolacion Municipalities in Cebu Province are under General Community Quarantine or GCQ for the next 15 days. The Chief Executive acknowledges the compliance of most residents in the NCR and nearby areas with the national government's measures to prevent the spread of COVID-19. However, Finance Secretary Carlos Dominguez believes quarantine measures in the metro and at Calabarzon must be further loosened up for economic recovery. Almost all industries in areas under GCQ are allowed to operate in various levels except for leisure and amusement services. In moderate and low-risk areas for COVID-19, Modified Community or Modified General Community Quarantine or MGCQ will be implemented. In moderate risk areas under MGCQ, strict local action shall be observed such as localized community quarantine or zoning, strict enforcement of minimum health standards, scale-up of health system, capacity and isolation facilities. Meanwhile, in other news, Harleen, complaints have reached the office of the president against the delivery company, the JNT, Ex JNT Express. He orders the National Bureau of Investigation and Criminal Investigation and Detection Group and the Bureau of Internal Revenue to investigate the matter. He also issues a stern warning of closure against the firm if they are held liable for irregularities and anomalies. Here's the statement of the chief executive. Because of the so many complaints, but I will close you down. Sigurado yan, sasarahan talaga kita, whether you like it or not, after the CIDJ and the NBI would finish their investigation and uh, would point a liability sa inyo. That's it, Arlene. Back to you. Thank you so much, Rosalie Cause, for that report. The country's health department has eyes set on reaching its target of more than 130,000 contact tracers. Our health correspondent, Aiko Miguel, explains why. The Department of Health admits the World Health Organization's assessment that the Philippine government has to strengthen its contact tracing efforts is true. The DOH says we still need more than 70,000 contact tracers apart from the existing 54,000. The DOH further says the Philippines has to reach the 130,000 benchmark of contact tracers to meet the WHO standard. Ang naging sistema kasi nilagyan natin ng standard no, na dapat sa isang uh, sa 800 na persons in a community, dapat may isa kang contact tracer. Based on the observation and assessment of WHO country representative Dr. Rabindra Abiyasingha, the government needs to speed up its contact tracing efforts as part of the COVID-19 response in mitigating the transmission of COVID-19. What we are advocating is that the DOH and the government invest in as they invest in expanding testing capacity to invest in actually contact tracing, identifying contacts and quarantining and isolating them so that we prevent further transmission from those cases. Unfortunately, this aspect of the Philippine response needs a little more strengthening. 
The health department is aware of WHO's observation and assessment. Actually, uh, those are valid observations. No? So, meron naman talaga tayong uh, uh, observations na ganyan that some of the LGUs, uh, meron talaga tayong kakulangan uh, for contact tracing. The DOH explains it cannot hire more contact tracers at this point because it needs 11.7 billion peso fund to do that. Earlier this month, Senate President Vicente Soto III opposed the proposed fund for contact tracing in the country. Secondly, there are qualifications for contact tracers as recommended by the Interior Department. May paliwanag nila dun sa pamilya kung ano ba talaga ang uh, COVID, kung bakit ay nagtitrace ng contacts, ano ba ang consequences kapag kakumalat, and so on and so forth. Another thing, they are also expected na aside from tracing contacts, they can also form part, so kasali rin sila dun sa monitoring team sa ground. So, maraming task na in-identified. The DOH continues to seek the help of local governments to hire contact tracer teams to be deployed in communities. This is for faster isolation and quarantine of direct contacts of positive cases and to curb the further spread of the virus. Aiko Miguel, UNTV News and Rescue. We serve the people. We give glory to God. The Manila local government places 31 barangays on a 48-hour hard lockdown this coming weekend. Some residents say they are in favor of this measure. Vincent Arboleda will tell us why. The Manila Health Department verifies that from June 15 to June 29, 31 barangays in the city of Manila have recorded at least three confirmed cases of COVID-19 each. These sum up to 147 confirmed cases for the 31 barangays recorded during the same period. This has prompted Mayor Francisco Esco Moreno Domagoso to sign Executive Order No. 31, placing 31 barangays in the city under enhanced community quarantine from 12 a.m. of July 4 until 11.59 p.m. of July 5. Because of such order, some residents of Barangay 775 in San Andres, Manila are working double time to earn money so they can buy goods in preparation for the 48-hour lockdown. Helen's husband, an on-call technician, is maximizing the remaining days to earn money. Katulad ng asawa ko, naghahanap ng uh, pera para makakuha kami ng two days, makapag-imba kami ng kahit pa paano. Dennis, a fruit vendor, is also using the days left before the lockdown to earn. Ano pala ngayon, bakit dalawang araw, mag-iipon muna, tipid-tipid muna eh. Dahil sa Badolinggo, lockdown eh. Despite the situation, the residents are in favor of the lockdown. The UNTV News team roamed around some areas in Manila today and we observed that some residents of Barangay 20 in Tundo, one of the barangays to be imposed with lockdown, were mingling without wearing face coverings and not even physical distancing. Children were playing on the street. Houses on Barangay 20 are cramped and do not have much ventilation inside them. Elsewhere, in Barangay 775, there were residents who disregard the physical distancing protocols. Eh, siguro po dahil sa katigasan na rin ng ulo ng mga tao, uh, may mga nakasalamuha po yata silang uh, merong COVID, kaya po siguro nahawa sila. Authorities will also conduct disease surveillance, rapid risk assessment, and testing in the 31 barangays. During this period, no one is allowed to go outside of their homes except those classified as essential workers. Local authorities will also deploy police personnel on strategic points to properly implement the ACQ. Director Rami Bagay of the Manila Barangay Bureau hopes that through this lockdown, the residents will seriously take into consideration their safety and follow the health protocols. Like we did on Sampaloc, yung mga taga Sampaloc ngayon na uh, nagkaroon ng disiplina. After ma lockdown, uh, nalaman nila yung mga obligasyon ng bawat isa sa mga mamayan kung paano talaga yung proper uh, uh, hygiene, distancing, face mask paglalabas. So yung obligasyon nila para hindi mahawaan itong sakit na to is na-educate na namin yung mga tao. Vincent Arboleda, UNTV News and Rescue. We serve the people. We give glory to God. The 
city government of Binyan, Laguna imposes stricter general community quarantine rules. This comes after the rise of confirmed COVID-19 cases in the city with over 100 based on the report of the Department of Health Region 4A. Before Laguna was placed under GCQ on June 1, Binyan City had only two confirmed cases of COVID-19. In the city's uh, radio program, Mayor Arman Dimagila said that he thinks Binyan is experiencing a second wave of infections. Ito na po ang second wave, I think ha. Hindi ako, hindi, hindi ito confirmado pero ang tingin ko, natatandaan nyo, before we enter GCQ coming from ECQ, dalawang pasyente na lang ang aktibong inaantay natin. Dalawa na lang we thought magsisiro tayo. And look where we are. For their part, the local police have intensified their action against persons not wearing face masks, violators of mass gatherings and social distancing rules, and curfew. There are no excuses. Violators will face penalties such as a fine or imprisonment based on their offense. Meanwhile, an employee of the Senate died this morning due to pneumonia while awaiting COVID-19 test results. The Senate's Office of the Sergeant at Arms says the employee was diagnosed with pneumonia last Monday and was tested for COVID-19 yesterday. However, they cannot confirm whether the employee died from COVID-19 as the swab test result has yet to be released. The Senate is currently under a semi-lockdown after two of its employees tested positive for COVID-19. Before July 27 or the day for his fifth State of the Nation address, President Rodrigo Duterte will ask the Congress to hold a special session to pass a new Bayanihan law that will grant special powers to the administration to respond to COVID-19. The first Bayanihan law expired on June 25 after its three-month effectivity. The palace admits upon the Bayanihan law expiration, the government must now undergo a rigorous process of procurement, including necessary medical equipment, for its COVID-19 response. Customs duties and taxes must also be imposed on imported medical products. Meanwhile, the economic managers of the Duterte administration and the two houses of Congress have agreed on the amount of stimulus package to be included in the Bayanihan II law. The report for si, uh, Secretary Dominguez and nagkasundo na halos nagkasundo doon sila ng uh, parehong kapulungan ng Kongreso at maisusulong na po yung bayanihan po. Let's now take a closer look at the updated count of coronavirus cases around the world. The COVID-19 pandemic has now reached a total of close to 10.5 billion confirmed cases in 188 countries, regions, and sovereignty. The fast-spreading disease has claimed over 511,000 lives, while almost 5.4 billion patients across the globe have recovered from the new coronavirus infection. Thanks be to God. Meanwhile, the country's Department of Health says that 99 new cases were reported today, including 595 fresh ones and 404 late cases. That raises total confirmed cases of coronavirus infection in the Philippines to 38,511. That is, as of 4 p.m. today, we have lost four more patients. But through our fervent prayers, medical interventions, and sacrifices of our medical frontliners, 205 Five more people have won their battle against the invisible enemy. That brings the total recoveries nationwide to 10,438. Thanks be to God. The Iloilo Provincial Capital sets up a walkthrough temperature detector at the building entrance. The aim is to quickly and easily check the body temperature of individuals visiting the capital and monitor anyone who shows possible symptoms of COVID-19. The number of people allowed to enter the building is limited while observing stricter health protocols. Meanwhile, Transportation Secretary Arthur Tugade went to Naia today in compliance with the President's order. Joan Nano tells us why. Alam mo yung sa yung airport na yan, kung sino nag-design na yan, walang upuan. 
Iilan lang ang upuan pagka nagpa ang mga flights nagpatong, yung iba nakatindig sa what's really worse is that merong restaurant dyan sa labas na malaki. Pahalisin mo yung restaurant, lagyan mo ng upuan, kasi yung iba mga merong mga bata, buntis, walang upuan. After President Rodrigo Duterte called him out last night, Transportation Secretary Arthur Tugade inspected Ninoy Aquino International Airport Terminal 3 where locally stranded individuals are accommodated for domestic flights. The Transportation Secretary ordered airport officials to procure 2,000 additional chair for Naiya where passengers could sit in. Tama ho yung Pangulo. Talagang kulang kasi nung normal, meron tayong total seating capacity mga 8,000 mahigit. No? Pero ngayon, dahil sa social distancing, ang ginagamit lang natin na upuan, kung 50%, kalahati. Secretary Tugade also instructed to open up restaurants and cafeterias that are not operational as of now to create more space for LSIs at the airport. He also ordered to provide food for LSIs during their stay in Naiya. The transport chief clarified, however, that only LSIs with confirmed tickets on the same day will be accommodated inside Naiya in case their flights get delayed. Technically, may confirmed flight on the same day. Kasi hindi ho kayo makakapasok pag wala kang ticket na may confirmed flight on that day you are entering. However, kinikilala ho natin ang pagkakataon na baka makaroon ng kansilasyon. Hindi ho namin itataboy palabas yan. Airport officials and Secretary Tugade personally went to an area in Andrus Avenue and found out that several stranded LSIs had confirmed tickets today but they were not allowed to enter Naiya because their flights got cancelled. After speaking with them, the LSIs were immediately brought to Naiya where they can stay temporarily until they could take flights bound for provinces. Joe Anano, UNTV News and Rescue. We serve the people, we give glory to God. During his public address last night, President Rodrigo Duterte reminded Interior Secretary Eduardo Año to gather all stranded individuals and bring them to temporary shelters with free food. Earlier today, we went to a waiting shed outside Naia Terminal 3 where we saw numbers of stranded passengers seeking help after their flights back to their provinces got cancelled. Two of them are Evelyn Manuel and Shamira Hassan who are hoping to get employed overseas. Seas, but they got stranded in Metro Manila instead due to the an due to corona due to an anti coronavirus measures. They say they have nowhere else to go. Kanina nagpalam kami na flight namin mamayang gabi. Tapos nagpinapirma kami doon na once kami umalis doon na hindi na kami pwedeng bumalik doon sa accommodation. Wala kaming magawa dito kami makatambay. Kasi wala kaming babalikan na doon eh. Gusto lang talaga namin makauwi na eh. Nandito lang po lahat. Along kaba, lungkot, na gusto nang umiyak. Hindi namin alam kung safe ba kami dito, kung anong bukas na naman naharapin namin. Pero okay lang, pray na lang. Yun na lang po. The Philippine Army says it is coordinating with the DILG in accommodating locally stranded individuals outside airport terminals. Currently, there are 754 locally stranded individuals who have been staying in their facilities at the Philippine Army complex, 12 of whom are in the quarantine facility after testing positive in the rapid test and are now scheduled for RT-PCR tests. Uh, and um, kung meron pang dadating, we will make the adjustment. No? So it was also a welcome uh, development that the DILG is also here. Maybe they can also help for other areas for them to have temporary transient facilities while waiting for their flights. Meanwhile, the Philippine Ports Authority has transported 184 stranded passengers to its multi-purpose hall while waiting for the resumption of trips bound to Iloilo and Bacolod. The PPA is appealing for those who would like to donate beds and toiletries to the stranded passengers. Waiting sila sa kanilang mga ano. Once na okay na yung papeles nila, papapasukin sila. There are also stranded individuals bound for Butuan who are staying in a tent outside the Manila North Harbor. According to them, they were denied boarding initially for not having a swab test. The PPA says individuals outside the Manila North Harbor lack necessary documents and will be accommodated once they have completed their requirements.
The Department of Education remains positive it can surpass the 80% targeted enrollees for this year amid challenges in enrollment process. Dante Abento tells us why. The Department of Education reiterates the opening of classes in public schools this year will be on August 24. This comes amid misconceptions that the school opening will be postponed to a later date. Education Secretary Leonor Briones said classes will proceed as approved. We have never, never, never stated that we will move the opening of classes. Ito ay inaprobahan ng IATF. Uh, ito din ay diniklara ng Presidente mismo. DepEd also denies reports that face-to-face -face classes will be allowed in some areas. Ay hindi yan totoo na i-allow natin ang face-to-face -face classes as of this time dahil sa non-negotiable commitment ngayon ng ating Presidente to the health and safety of our learners. The Education Department remains positive. It will surpass the 80% targeted number of enrollees this year in spite of challenges in enrollment in some remote areas. Based on data from DepEd, there are more than 16.6 million enrollees as of today across the country. This is just 59.81% of last year's 27.7 million. There is still enough time through the extension of enrollment. Kung titignan natin ngayon yung, yung um, ating numero, uh, sa public school nga, nasa 70% na tayo eh. Sana nga, mas uh, mahigit pa doon sa 80% na tinatarget natin. No? Pero siyempre, kailangan natin uh, ipagpatuloy yung ating kooperasyon. Dante Amento, UNTV, News and Rescue. We serve the people. We give glory to God. The Land Transportation Franchising and Regulatory Board, or LTFRB, releases the final guidelines for the resumption of traditional jeepney operations on Metro Manila roads, which begin tomorrow. Under Memorandum Circular 2020-26, the LTFRB allows 6,002 units of traditional jeepneys to get back on 47 routes in Metro Manila. Jeepney drivers in the approved routes will no longer have to secure a special permit. Instead, a corresponding QR code will be given to operators prior to their operations, which must be printed and posted in front of their jeepneys. Jeepney operators can download the QR code at www.ltfrb.gov.ph. LTFRB reiterates the minimum fare will remain at 9 pesos for the first 4 kilometers, an additional 1 peso and 50 centavos for every succeeding kilometer. The the complete list of approved routes for traditional jeepneys is posted on the LTFRB's official Facebook account. Meanwhile, workers of ABS-CBN Corporation appeal to the Philippine government to allow the network to broadcast for their sake. Ray Palayo has the news why. Actually, uh, nung lunis pa lang, uh, hindi na ako makakatulog kasi yung hindi kasi nabanggit na na yung posibilidad na mag magayit ng panibagong system disease order yung NPC. This is how the president of ABS-CBN Workers Union feels about the present status of the station. Yesterday, the National Telecommunications Commission or NTC issued an alias cease and desist order on the airing of Channel 43 resulting in the signing off of ABS-CBN programs on Digibox. Villanueva said ABS-CBN employs around 11,000 workers. For now, they continuously receive salary but they do not know until when. Sa Pangulo, Kaya siya makapag-eri ang APSCB na bang uh, pinapalakay pa o nasa proseso ng pag-apo ba yung pangkisa ng APSCB. The union appeals to President Rodrigo Duterte to allow the station to broadcast again for their and their family's sake. The APSCB and management has not given its statement on the matter as of the moment. Ray Pelayo, UNTV News and Rescue. We serve the people, we give glory to God.
Let's take a look at the situation on the road. So far, we have a light to at times moderate traffic situation here in our area along Edsa northbound lane from motorists coming from Kabuning going to Kazon Avenue. Meanwhile, for motorists coming from North Edsa going to Kabuning, expect a light to moderate traffic along the Edsa southbound lane. And for our weather update. The Surlees are affecting the eastern sections of Visayas and Mindanao. State Weather Bureau Pagasa says Metro Manila and the rest of the country may experience partly cloudy to cloudy skies with isolated rain showers or thunderstorms caused by the easterlies or localized thunderstorms. Possible flash floods or landslides may occur during severe thunderstorms. And for the news abroad, here's Kath Dumaraos live from Bangkok, Thailand. Good evening, Kath. Good evening, William, and to Diego and Harleen. How are you? Um, I'm very good, uh, Kath, and um, I hope you are doing well too. So, uh, what have you got for us tonight? Well, William, as an effort to relieve the economy and having no local virus transmission in the last 37 days, the government of Thailand has proceeded with the fifth phase of easing COVID-19-related restrictions today, July 1st, under strict precautionary measures. In a bit, I will also tell you why the military in Brazil delivered protective material and medicines on Tuesday by helicopter to isolated Amazon indigenous communities, and why the Mississippi governor signed a new law. Okay, thank you. And go ahead, please tell us why, Kath. High-risk business establishments and leisure activities such as pubs, bars, karaoke shops, and massage parlors can now resume their operations here in Thailand. People who visit these establishments are required to check in and out of the Thai China platform to track their whereabouts. Schools here in Thailand has also started their first semester with health and safety measures in place, including temperature screening, wearing face masks, providing washing hand spots or alcohol gel, and physical distancing. Meanwhile, the Thai government extended the emergency decree to July 31st for use in emergency situations such as controlling travel in and out of the country and support the tracking and quarantine of people suspected of being infected with the virus. Two new cases of coronavirus disease were reported today, both workers returning from Kuwait, raising the total to 3,173, with 3,059 recovered, 56 remain in hospitals, and the death toll unchanged at 58. U.S. Vice President Mike Pence on Tuesday said he is optimistic about the progress being made on treatments for coronavirus patients and the development of a vaccine. Pence also noted that the government was distributing another tranche of remdesivir this week. Gilead Sciences Incorporated on Monday priced its COVID-19 antiviral remdesivir at $2,340 per patient for wealthier nations and agreed to send nearly all of its supplies of the drug to the United States over the next three months. Remdesivir is expected to be in high demand as one of the only treatments so far shown to alter the course of COVID-19. The company is developing an inhaled version that could be used outside a hospital setting. Elsewhere in Brazil, the military delivered protective material and medicines on Tuesday by helicopter to isolated Amazon indigenous communities bordering Venezuela and conducted testing for COVID-19. None tested positive in the rapid finger prick test, but the coronavirus pandemic is threatening to decimate hundreds of Amazon tribes that have no immunity to external diseases and live a communal lifestyle that rules out social distancing. The operation to help the Yanomami who live on Brazil's largest reservation is aimed at countering criticism that the right-wing government of President Jair Bolsonaro is not doing enough to protect indigenous people from contagion. An army airlifted materials on a Black Hawk helicopter to a military frontier post deep in the rainforest with boxes of face masks, alcohol gel, aprons, gloves, tests and medicines, including 13,500 pills of controversial anti-malaria drug chloroquine. Elsewhere in the United States, 
Mississippi Governor Tate Reeves on Tuesday signed a bill into law replacing the current state flag that includes a Confederate emblem, a gesture triggered by support across the United States to dismantle symbols of slavery and racism. The removal of the flag, a long simmering source of controversy in one of the breakaway southern states that fought in the 1860s American Civil War, follows the death of George Floyd, an African American killed while in police custody in Minnesota. The measure that Mississippi's first-term Republican governor signed also created a commission to design a new flag. Voters will have the opportunity to approve the design in November, according to statement from Reeves' office. There are people on either side of the flag debate who may never understand the other. We as a family must show empathy. We must understand that all who won't change are not attempting to erase history. And all who want the status quo are not mean-spirited or hateful. Tokyo Disneyland reopened today to fanfare and strengthened social distancing measures after four months of closure due to the coronavirus pandemic. The resort, which also includes Tokyo Disney Sea, had been closed since February 29 as coronavirus cases rose in Japan. As part of the reopening, Tokyo Disney has adopted various social distancing measures, such as restricting the number of visitors to 50% of the normal capacity or lower, regularly taking visitors' body temperatures, and suspending parades and shows, park operators said. Fans who had been patiently waiting for the reopening expressed their excitement. Tokyo Disneyland's reopening follows that of other temporarily shut Disney parks in Shanghai and Hong Kong. And those are the reasons behind the news here in Thailand and in other parts of the globe. Back to you, William. Yes, uh, thank you very much, uh, Kaf Dumaraos. Please stay safe in Thailand. See you again. Those are the reasons behind the news, July 1, 2020. I am Harleen Delgado. We serve the people. We give glory to God. Reasons we deliver to you as they unfold, I'm Angelo Castro III. And I am William Theo. Because we need to know, we will always ask why. Have a great evening, everyone.